he's flunked science. What? I can't believe it. Eddie's always had it up here. Well, it's about time we gave it to him down here. I was just in his room, and I found these letters from his school principal, Mr. Balding. Three of them. Obviously, he's been hiding them. I can't understand it. We've never given him any reason to be afraid of us. That's true, Lily. I tell you, I'm very concerned. I haven't been so shocked since the last time I sat in Grandpa's chair. What are we going to do? Well, I think we'll have to go right down to that school and find out what's going on. There's nothing better at a time like this than meeting face to face. <laughs> Don't you think you're being a trifle too harsh on the boy? In my professional opinion, Eddie Munster should be expelled. I think you're going too far, Taggart. After all, this is a grammar school. You're not a prison guard anymore. If you'd use a few more of my methods, you'd have less trouble with some of your inmates. I mean, pupils. Look, Taggart, I don't care if your brother-in-law is a member of the Board of Education. I am running this school, not you. Now, there could be a perfectly good reason why the Munsters haven't answered my letters. That's exactly what Dillinger's principal said. <laughs> All right. What do you suggest we should do about it? You leave it to me. I'm going out to their house and throw a good scare into those monsters. <laughs> Eddie, why didn't you show us these notes from your teacher? I guess I didn't want you to know that I was failing science, sir. I can't understand it. Don't you want to follow in your father's tracks? Young man, I think we're just going to have to suspend some of your privileges. No more standing in the closet. No more sleeping in Spot's cage. And from now on, every night, you're gonna have to go to bed while it's still dark. Isn't that a little severe, Herman? Well, you're, you're positively inhuman. Oh, please. Young man, I'm laying down the law. You're supposed to have a project ready for the science fair. Where is it? Well, you see, it's... No excuses. I want you to start right away on that project, and I mean right now. <laughs> what is so funny? It's, it's, it's this joke book. Listen to this one, Lily. It'll kill you. Well, it's a little late for that, but go ahead. I just invented something to keep the inside of my car quiet. It fits right over her mouth. <laughs> And if you think that one's funny, listen to this. Two men are walking Why down Why do you a like to read that silly joke book? It's not silly. Besides, it's very important nowadays to have a sense of humor. Now, I even noticed it down at the parlor. During lunch, the guys are always sitting around laughing and joking. As soon as I walk over, they stop. Speaking of work, you'd better get going. You'll be late again. I guess you're right. They're starting to call me the late Herman Munster. <laughs> Besides, I've got to take two hours off today to go down and visit Eddie's principal. Uh, by the way, where is Eddie, anyway? He's still down in the laboratory, working on his science project. Okay, Eddie. Get the head, and we'll put it on. You know, Eddie, this is turning out to be the finest robot we've ever made. Boy, I sure hope it brings my marks up when I enter it in the science fair at school. I'm certain it will. We've worked hard enough on it. 
Grandpa, help me. No, no, I didn't. I merely supervised. You know, Marilyn, this boy has a naturally mechanical mind. <laughs> Let it be. I've been trying to get away from the shop all morning, but it looks as though I won't be able to make it. We're just too busy. People are dying to get in here. I think it's because of our new layaway plan. You want me to cancel the appointment, Uncle Herman? No, 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 no. Uh, the school would think we're not reliable. Uh, ask your Aunt Lily to go. Aunt Lily's not here. She's gone to the dentist to have her teeth filed. How about Grandpa going instead? Now, you know Grandpa never goes out in the daytime. How would it be if I went? Oh, would you, dear? Oh, that would be very nice of you. I'm sorry, Marilyn. I have to go now. Uh, they're starting. That's all right, Uncle Herman. We all have to go sometime. Bye. <laughs> oh, you run along to class, Eddie. I'm going in to talk to your principal. Okay, but I don't think it'll do any good. Well, it doesn't hurt to try. Uh, see you later. And don't be afraid. He's kind of scary. <laughs> Come in, please. Good afternoon. Are you Eddie Munster's father? And no, I'm his grandfather. At your service. Oh, I'm Taggart. Juvenile investigator for the Board of Education. Came in to check up on Eddie Munster. Environment-wise, that is. Uh, well, you see, Eddie's parents are not here, but I would be glad to show you around. All my life, I never saw a house in this condition. Thank you. Yes, it is hard to believe that my daughter does this all by herself. <laughs> it's just follow me, Mr. Taggart. This is our living room. <laughs> cozy, isn't it? You call this cozy. Job time. Excuse me, but I have to go and feed the clock. <laughs> More? Never more. <laughs> Don't worry, cutie pie. I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> Excuse me. You haven't Come and get it. an amazing appetite for a goldfish. <laughs> Eddie was just too ashamed to show us your letters. I was beginning to think no one in your family cared. Oh, no, we were all especially disappointed to hear he was failing science. Especially? You see, my whole family is very interested in science. My grandfather even has a laboratory in the basement. Then I can't understand why his science work in school should be so poor. Well... I guess Eddie was just spending too much time working on his project for the science fair. It's a robot. A robot? Huh? Well, what do you think? This is my laboratory, where I uh, work on some of my experiments. What are these restraining straps for? Well, some of my experiments don't like it. <laughs> Wait till you see this. What is that? That's Eddie's robot. He made it all by himself. Nothing but a pile of tin cans. Succotash, baked beans, Harvard beets. It's amazing what you can do with leftovers. Hey, you want to see how it works? Well, never mind. I, I don't care whether it works or not. Any boy who comes from an environment like this has no place in our school system. After meeting me and visiting Eddie's home, you're throwing him out of school? <laughs> that is my recommendation. Sick him! <laughs> yeah? I keep that thing away from me!
After talking with you, I feel Mr. Taggart may have been a little hasty. My aunt and uncle will be so glad to hear you're giving Eddie a second chance. Well, any boy interested enough in science to build a robot deserves a second chance. Thanks again, Mr. Balding. Oh, uh, the youngsters are bringing their projects to the science fair tonight. Be sure Eddie has his robot there. My family and I will see you then. Good. I'll be looking forward to seeing them, face to face. <laughs> Taggart. Don't tell me you've become a beatnik at your age. I have just come from the Munster's house, and I was lucky to escape with my life. Any boy who comes from that background has got to be a delinquent. You should see the boy's grandfather. He looks like a fat Jack the Ripper. Taggart, this is not a reform school. We can't expel every student you don't like. There wouldn't be anyone here but the janitor. Eddie Munster is really different. Oh, nonsense. His cousin was right here in my office, and she's a charming, lovely person. And she convinced me to give the boy a second chance. <laughs> say ah. Uh. Come on, say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Oh, I'm sorry, Grandpa. I didn't know you had company. Excuse me. That's not company. That's Eddie's robot. How do you do? That's amazing. If the top of his head was a little flatter, he'd look positively human. <laughs> I've seen that robot. It's not only a piece of junk, it's a menace to society. It's got a flat head. Now that is a sure sign of a criminal type. <laughs> I'll see it for myself tonight. And Taggart, if you're lying, it's your job. You're forgetting my brother-in-law is a member of the Board of Education. <laughs> I don't care if your father's the governor. <laughs> job security I have left is to make sure that robot don't work. Sometimes I wish I'd stayed a prison guard. You meet a better class of people. <laughs> Herman, if you hadn't spent so much time reading that joke book, we could have been here an hour ago. Sorry, dear, but you know how hard it is to put a book down in the middle of a joke. <laughs> Herman, we'll take the robot backstage. You go and park the car. Sick him. I want to apologize. I was a bit hasty today. That's different. After seeing the robot, I realized that Eddie must come from a very unusual family. Thank you. <laughs> yes, this is uh, certainly a very handsome uh, piece of work. Uh, Mr. Taggart, are you attending the science fair? No, I want to go over Eddie's records. I want to make sure that he gets uh, exactly what's coming to him. Thank you. <laughs> Start her up, Eddie. Let's give it a trial run. What happened? That's the first time I've ever seen a robot with indigestion. <laughs> That was little Andrea Sue Blum, class two, B4, reading her composition, What Einstein's Theory of Relativity Means to Me. Something wrong? It's the robot, Uncle Herman. It's not working. Eddie, try it again. I think it's the carburetor. 
the only answer is an emergency carburetor ectum. Now help me get this into the dressing room. Next is Master Jules Daly, class 4A3, with his own invention, electric chopsticks. <laughs> You think you'll be finished on time? They'll be calling for Eddie soon. Why don't you just take the robot? Uh, Herman, please. I didn't interfere when you were being put together. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Ready. Can't open her. Can't open her. Can't open her. <laughs> You know how squeamish Herman is. He always faints at the sight of oil. <laughs> Ribbit. 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 Thank you, thank you. Now, the last exhibit on our science fair tonight will be a robot built by young Eddie Munster. Oh, Grandpa, they're introducing the robot right now. What'll we do? Please, please, I mean, these things take time. After all, I'm only flesh and blood. <laughs> Somebody will just have to go out there and stall them until we're ready, like they do in those old Don Amici movies on TV. <laughs> but who? Is it over yet? I... I have no idea what's holding things up, but... I'm sure you'll be right out. The robot, please. Stole them? Yes. How? Just talk to them. Talk to them? Oh, I couldn't. That, I'd be scared to death. I'd, I'd get stage fright. What could I say? Why don't you tell them some of those jokes you've been reading in that book? That ought to keep them amused. Now, Herman, this could be a big break. Go out there and give them everything you've got. Look, just think, Herman, this could mean Hollywood, the palace. <laughs> Come on, Jim. All right. I'll go out there. But I'm not doing this for fame or fortune, or to be the life of the party. <laughs> I'm doing this for Eddie. been asked to come out here and uh, entertain you. <laughs> Amazing. It looks almost alive. Yes. Why can't our Sydney build something like that? He's 16 years old. He can barely wave bye-bye. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my first public appearance, so you'll have to bear with me if I don't function too well. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this situation reminds me of a story. Uh, one time Abraham Lincoln was asked if he found appearing at public ceremonies annoying. He said, yes. In fact, I feel like the man who was ridden out of town on a rail, who said, if it wasn't for the honor of the thing, I'd rather walk. <laughs> I think I found the trouble. Someone has thrown a wrench in the works. Let's do a thing like that. Haggard. <laughs> and they even have an invention for keeping the inside of the car quiet. It fits right over her mouth. <laughs> Well, 
that's as much as I can do. Now it's all up to that big mechanic in the sky. Who wears the biggest hat in the world? The man with the biggest head. <laughs> Can we bring it out now? Of course. All we have to do is get Herman off the stage. Come on. Careful, Grandpa. See? Stop now. The robot's dead. Stop now? Are you kidding? You hear him out there? I'm a smash. <laughs> I tell you, they're my kind of people. They love me out there. I got them right in the palm of my hand. Herman, Mr. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Aren't you forgetting something? This is supposed to be Eddie's night, not yours. But, Lily, I... <laughs> Lily, I guess you're right. I'm just a big ham. It was the lights and the applause. I, I just got carried away. Eddie, you hear that out there? That's for you. Now take your robot and go on out there and kill him. Herman. Really, that's just a show business expression. OK, Eddie, start her up now. Sorry, Eddie. I've let you down. It's all my fault. What am I gonna do? There's nothing to do. I'll just go out and explain. No, Dad. That's my job. No. Eddie just informed me his robot exploded backstage. Oh. However, however, I think I speak for everyone here when I say the special prize should still go to Eddie Munster. Yeah. Really? Eddie tells me he doesn't deserve to win. He was helped by his grandfather. You know, I think such honesty should be rewarded. Eddie, my young friend, you're the kind of a boy we're proud to have in our school. Yes. I think our Eddie has just become a man. And the hard way. Not like you, Herman. <laughs> That's our boy. Where's Eddie? And where's my joke book? I haven't seen it. And Eddie's down in the lab. He and Grandpa are working on a new project. Another invention? It's got something to do with the robot. <laughs> it's remarkable how that boy's marks have improved. He's liable to turn out just like me if he keeps his head to the grindstone. <laughs> so glad to hear they sent that awful Mr. Taggart back to prison service. It's men like him who give prisons a bad name. <laughs> Why does a chicken cross the road? Kill that on the other side. <laughs> That was good, Eddie. Good. Try another one. Why do firemen wear red suspenders? To keep their hats up. <laughs> Eddie will make a fortune. They say that Ford Bill is dead, but you and I were gonna bring it back to life. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. 